verbs are a really important and fundamental concept in Latin grammar, so it's really, really crucial that you've got a good grasp on them. So I've made this video just to recap what we know about verbs so far in Year 10. So, we know that verbs are doing words that describe actions. We also know that verbs have person, number, and tense, and I'll go over what these are in a bit more detail in a moment. We also know that Latin verbs change their endings according to these three things. So firstly, person. Person tells us who is doing a verb, or kind of the perspective that the action is being told from. This can be either first person, which is talking about yourself, second person, which is talking to someone else, and third person, which is talking about someone else. So if you think of first to third, moving further away from yourself. Number will tell us how many people are doing a verb, and it can be either singular, meaning one person is doing the verb, or plural, meaning more than one person is doing a verb. When we combine person and number together, we have six different possible endings that a, noun, a verb can have. So first person singular is I, plural is we. In Latin, these words are ego and nos. Second person singular and plural, in English we'd say you for either of them, although in Latin they've got two different words, so two for you being one person and vos being you for more than one person. Finally, third person, and you'll often see this um, using a person's name or a noun rather than a pronoun, um, but the pronouns he, she, it, is, a, id, and they, a, ai, and ar also exist in Latin. Finally, we have tense, which tells us when a verb is being done. In year 10, we've met four different tenses. The first one is the present, which means an action that is happening now. The second is the imperfect, which refers to an ongoing, repeated, or habitual action in the past. The perfect is a completed or one-off action in the past. And the pluperfect refers to something that takes place further back in the past than the perfect. So now for our endings. We should know these well off by heart by now. The present tense endings, OST, mustus, NT, um, can be translated in a number of different ways in English. So ambulo can mean I walk, I am walking, or I do walk, but in Latin it's just one and the same. The imperfect tense is very recognisable by the BA in them. Barn, bas, bart, barnus, bartus, barnt. Again, there's a couple of different ways that you can translate these, but the idea is that it's an ongoing action in the past or a repeated action in the past. The perfect tense um, ends in e, isti, it, emus, istis, aerunt. Sometimes there's a funny consonant like a V in here for the stem, but not always. Remember to translate this as a completed or one-off action. So ambulawi, either I walked, I have walked, or I did walk. Finally, our newest tense, the pluperfect, is quite recognisable because it's got an era on the end. It has the same stem as the perfect, um, and you'll recognise the endings as the same as the verb to be in the imperfect. Eram era serat, eram serat is erant. These are always translated as had. When we compare across the um, four tenses, we can see some patterns across the endings, and I suggest that you pay close attention to these to help you to learn them. For example, second person singular always has an S in it, third person singular always ends in a T. Mus and tis are quite distinctive for first and second person plural, and the NT ending um, for the third person plural is always there as well. So, a few key points for you to remember. Um, there's a few th important things that each verb has. The first one is person, which tells us who's doing a verb, and number, how many people are doing a verb. Tense tells us when a verb is being done, and so there's different endings for each of these. Um, I suggest that you use patterns to help you learn your endings off by heart, and so then you can easily recognise them when you're translating, so your story is perfect. Well done.